sort of things as we kind of get uh, into our quarterly meeting trying to get back into a flow of having quarterly meetings. We've had starts and stops and COVID and all kinds of stuff. And we were doing really well when we were meeting quarterly and making decisions together and kind of want to get back to that process. So we're starting off uh, with the new year in Gospel Project and our other, a couple of other lines and just want this is a good time to get going. And then uh, hopefully we'll have some chocolate cupcakes and Karen's honor at the end, and I'll introduce you to uh, Colleen, who will be taking Karen's place, and so she's going to be joining us a little bit later. So with all that said, let me open us with a word of prayer, and we'll get started this evening. So gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the true rock stars of First Baptist, Lord, that do the hard work of ministry uh, week in and week out, and uh, minister to the people in their class, or open to prospects, uh, make guests feel welcome. There's so much that happens within a small window. Lord, uh, I'm appreciative of how they manage that time and how well they do that. Lord, tonight as we celebrate the years that Karen has been with us, Lord, uh, we're, I'm excited that Karen and Buddy really aren't going anywhere. They'll still be among us and our friends. But Lord, I'm just excited for their next phase of life as they enjoy grandkids and retirement. Lord, and I'm just thankful for, for, for Colleen and her willingness to step into some very big shoes and to take on the task of learning uh, to do all of the things that Karen does. Lord, tonight let this meeting be productive. Um, let me be focused and let uh, me be able to answer the questions appropriately. I've asked a lot tonight, Lord, but most of all, we're just glad that you're in our presence as well. For where two or more are gathered, there you are also. Thank you for joining us. I pray this in your name. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here, and as you come in, Karen's got a sheet for you, and she'll hand that out to you. You may have to get with you know, somebody that's in your group so that you can see, but here's our simple agenda tonight. I'm, I'm convinced I need to get to simpler agendas, so we're going to talk about a little bit about group management and group communication um, and using some of those tools that are available to us. We're going to spend some time talking about groups that thrive. And so um, as I look at uh, going back and looking at some stuff that Arthur Flick has done, uh, the, uh, some of the stuff that Saddleback has done in small groups, some of the things that I've been doing with Texas Baptists in groups, I'm pulling out some different things from those those are things I think that will help us uh, get back on a solid growth track. And so tonight we're going to start kick that off by talking about groups that thrive in building community. And so we'll do that and then we'll have some question and answer time and then we'll, we're just going to say thanks to Karen. So that's our simple agenda tonight and we're going to have a good time uh, together. And so um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but I do want to encourage you to um, promote, encourage, back check attendance. And so you're not the first group in our church to get this. I, I talked about it with our staff at length um, a couple of weeks ago. And so this software allows us to do some things that were not even remotely possible in Shelby. And I'm excited about that. You're going, oh, attendance is attendance, Larry. Well, this uh, allows us to begin to relate attendance. So as we look for maybe a guest who's attending worship that's filled out a contact card and maybe they're entering their own attendance versus Sunday school versus other groups, who's, who's attending a worship service and maybe a women's event, we can begin to collate that information in ways that we've never been able to mine through it in the past. And so... We're, look, we're looking at being able to, to begin to see when and where people fall through the cracks at First Baptist. And I'm really, really excited about that, but it begins with being faithful just to load in the raw information. And that's never exciting. But um, there are more tools in church teams to do that than we've had in the past. Uh, I'm going to explain a couple of quirks to you. Uh, that you may run into, and uh, we'll talk about that. The first one is check-in. 
if you check in, you encourage people to check in on their phone. You have to pull your phone out. I don't know why I said phone, and I just automatically reached for mine. But if you type the word check, you know, we talk a lot about text me to the, to the church number. Well, if you check text the word check, it will open up. It will say, are you Larry Stair? And if I say yes, then I'll be able to enter my attendance. I don't even have to go to the kiosk. I don't have to open the app. It just does it all seamlessly. Uh, it's not super fast, but it does work. You can do it on the app. If you're one of those groups that have children, this has been the most one of the most confusing things, hasn't it, Susan? Yeah. You text, you check your kids in, and you get a text from Bob Hawkins or Larry Stair. Today, mine came from Tracy Mayo. Whoever the last staff person you texted on the church number is who that comes back to you from. And so that was real confusing for a lot of parents. So somebody checks a child in and they go, who's Larry Stair? You know, don't worry about it. That's just it telling you. That's the code number that's on the check-in thing. So if they lost the ticket, they would be able to show their cell phone and um, do that. And so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on attendance. If you want to look at your specific attendance, ways to enter attendance, the big thing is if you get most of your folks going by the kiosk and just checking in or doing it on their phone, we're, not, we're no longer printing name tags for adults. The reason is, is that we were having a 50-50 kind of mix. Guests didn't have name tags. Part of the class have name tags. Some of you were sticking it on, you know, had a stack three or four deep on the back of your quarterly. Right, Bill? And then uh, some of you was on your coffee cup. I was okay with that. But um, and a lot of people didn't want a name tag, so they weren't checking in. So I thought, okay, we'll do away with name tags, and everybody will check in. No, that was the wrong, the wrong thing. Um, I, I think we're catching about 75% of our adult tenants on a Sunday morning. And so um, if you want to know how many check in, I can show you week by week. And we're getting now to the point we've been on it for the summer. I've been kind of lax. Uh, Karen's retiring. Poor Colleen is going to get the job. that it, we have. A, I have a report that I've got built. That if you have less than 5% of your attendance marked, then just expect a phone call. Okay? Um, because that relationship is important. And we, as we can begin to collate it to other things, that's going to be really helpful, especially worship because we can do attendance for young adult worship. We can do attendance for worship. Who comes to both of those? Who doesn't? Um, that might be really useful information for Travis and his planning. Um, you know, who in my Bible study attends which worship? So giving you to see where those, when we can ask it those kinds of questions, we can do some different kind of planning that we've never been able to do here at First Baptist, okay? I have talked enough about attendance. Uh, but just encourage it, promote it. One of the big things that we'll touch on in a minute is you can have it email a couple of people in your class, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, yes, sir. People that came in by Zoom in our class, I could check them in as attendance. I can't do that. I'll, I can show you how afterwards. You can. It's it's not the smoothest thing, Jerry, but I can show you how to do it. It's it's not that hard. But those Zoom people could also just do it online themselves. They could register their own attendance. So, but anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, group communication. So, um, who's here, when, and how often, and are we seeing new faces, and are they sticking? So, obviously, um, all, all of these things are important to me, and I hope that they will be important to you, especially that last one, are they sticking? And so... On your uh, packet of, of things, you would have got a sheet that looks something like this. They're all going to be a little bit different. Uh, if you're adult one, they have 108 people on their list. It's like multiple pages. I only have like three quarters of a page on mine. So it's all, they're all going to be different. But there's some things that I want to point out to you. If you print this out, you get a little extra information, and it will look like this top page that says uh, attendance by member consistency. 
And so if you, if you go in the computer and you do it, you'll see this graph, but you won't see this top sheet, okay? And so it's got some things like did not meet. Um, for the first time, we've got a situation in our software where it's like with COVID a couple of weeks, Bob's class didn't meet, and this may be the only one. I think I went in and Mark Bob's class did not meet, and that and that's now recorded. I can't really put a reason why, but it records that it did not meet. Um, no meeting schedule. So like we get to Christmas, I can put in no meeting schedule for all of the groups, and it changes how it figures the percentages, okay? NR, no report, and so if you've got a bunch of NRs or blanks, that's important. X isn't a tender. That's, it just kind of prints a key if you're printing it out. But let's look at, at this. I'm going to show you some things. This chart rolls, okay? So it's always going to have about the same number of columns. It's not, you can make it do a year's worth by asking the question, but just to go in, to your class, click reports, member consistency, and you check that, it's gonna open up, they're gonna go run, and it will produce this. And so here's some things that are important about this printout. Obviously, an X is they were here. Now, um, we go through this and you're gonna go, wow, Larry, you've got a really good class. You've got 94% attendance. I have a horrible class. And I'll show you why I know that. Look at, look at how many people have joined my class. I've got Kaylee. So there's no X's and it's kind of a different gray color. So that's when Kaylee joined. That's when we added Kaylee. And so here's Jake. We added him here. And beyond that, I haven't added anybody. Okay, so I have a great percentage, but I've got no prospects. Now, obviously, this is a staff a little bit different, but if you're, class, if you're trying to get 100% attendance, that's the wrong goal. I'm just going to tell you that right off the top, okay? Sunday school is not about having perfect attendance. You know, you know somebody doesn't come, let's get rid of them. Well, yeah, let's get rid of some people. If they're attending another church, and, they, and we know that, that's a good reason to get rid of them off of your role. If they say, Larry, uh, if Jake, Jake Maxey, if, if you've met Jake, he would never say this. Jake would never come to me and say, Larry, you're ugly. I, just take me off the role. Jake is the nicest guy you're ever going to meet. Um, but if he did do that, then I would say, okay, thank you, and I would take him off the role. And obviously, if they are deceased, if I die, please remove me from the church Sunday school role. Okay, I don't think I'm going to come back. Heaven, I hear, is wonderful. I'm going to church there. Okay, so, but there are some things in here that are important. Um, how often someone is attending? I, my class is not a good example because everybody's here pretty much all the time. Dustin and Melody obviously were out uh, last week. This was as of Sunday. Doesn't have the day in it, and um, uh, I was out. So you can go through really quickly, and you can see who's attending when and where. Okay, so that's that's really really good to be able to go. Who's coming in? Who's going out? This percentage down here is of some value, but it's more of like looking at this as a as a snapshot of my class. And the big thing is, is if you've got somebody that comes in one time, like um, if Tim Darst had come in and he'd been here two weeks and never come back, that tells me something very important. Tim didn't like us. Now the question I would have as a leader is, he seemed like a nice guy. Why didn't Tim like us? There could be a lots of reasons. The, the other thing that is of value in this is number of group members. There is, and this was quite controversial and I have it turned off. Did anybody remember the first week or two in, in church teams 
it, it, you, some of you may have had a red attendance number because you were over the number. When we went to church teams, we had to put a number in for every class. Okay? And if you were over that number, it, sh it would show red. Now, I have it turned off. It's not going to show that now. But a good exercise for you would be to do this this week. Count the number of chairs in your classroom, the number of people that you think you could get in on a shoehorn Easter Sunday morning. Okay? That's really the maximum for your class. That number is important. And this software will tell you that at a glance when we turn it on. Or when you go look at your class, it would show you. Because you can't put more foot in the boot than you got boot. I'm just going to, that's just the brass tacks of it, okay? Then the other thing we know about people is if you're at 80%, if you had, you know, 10 chairs in the room and you've got eight people in the room, or if you've got nine and a couple walks in, they're probably not going to stick. A lot of our classes are full, okay? When we talk about, or, or over full, I wasn't going to name any names, but, but some of our classes are just full. The number one, the fastest way for me to get a no at first pass is to say, would you consider teaching? I mean, Moses tarried longer before he answered than most people will answer on that one, okay? Now, obviously, I'm pretty picky at who I ask, and I think a lot of those people should be called to teach. But you begin to get an idea of how this chart can help you or help the leadership of your group begin to make some plans. You know, um, I, I think that's hugely important. And like I said, this rolls. I don't know that their colors are really necessarily helpful. If you flip over to the back page of that, it will give you a little like diagram as to what that means. Or I think it's on the, when you go on the computer, it will tell you what that is. But basically, if it's pink, there's, they're like, remember when we used to do prospects and I would tell you they were a red prospect that we, you know, we're about to lose them. Okay, we kind of had levels. That's, that's uh, Boyd's attempt at that. You know, if they're here less than 75% of the time, you know, they're going to ask a question, do they miss me? If they're, if they're in that 50s, are they, they're probably going to answer that question. They know the answer, and if they're pink, they know they're gone. And so being my, now there's exceptions to that. We have people that are coming in by Zoom every week. Uh, we need to start counting them. I mean, uh, Melva and her mom were faithful, faithful attenders in your class for years and years and years. And, you know, I probably, we never counted them. Oh, that's, there we go. So that's good. But they've asked to be removed. Yeah, day was their last day. And so um, we just need to get back to these numbers are real people. And we need to be cultivating those relationships, okay? So anybody have a question about, about this. This is pretty self-explanatory, but it just lays it out. You can go on your group report, member consistency, and it'll spit this out every time you touch the button. It's really, really easy, and I think it's one of its better, better reports. There is um, the second page when you print it out. You can figure this out, but it does it for you when you when you actually try to print it. And, and the easiest way to do it is just tell your printer to do it as a PDF. You don't actually have to waste the paper to see this. But in my class, I have 13 members who have attended at least once. So you could look at your role and go, okay, I've got 25 names on my role. We'll play like I'm a real class. I got 25 names on my role, and 13 of those 25 names have attended at least once. I'm about a 50% class. That's a really good good place to be is the Southern Baptist Sunday School because we've got some prospects that we're cultivating, we've got some members that are out of town, we know who they are, you know, we've got a chair for everybody most Sundays, 
But then the other one is distinct members attending two or more times. So these are the people that are getting a little bit more regular, okay? So it just does the math, math for you. you. You could figure all this out pretty quick with a piece of paper, but it just spits it out for you, okay? So I wanted to point that out. If you hit uh, print PDF, you'll see this as the third page, okay? Questions, comments? Prospect list. Um, we are starting to put prospects back to your class. Um, and um, every time we assign a prospect, I know it. The interesting thing about church teams is you touch it, I know it. Okay? You, it's, it's okay for you to drop somebody from a class. If you, you know, Larry's dead. You know, please let the office know and you can go by my name and you can check the box and you can say remove. And then you can go down to the bottom of the page for your group and you'll see class history. And you'll see the date that you removed me. Okay? Let the church office know because this software allows us to, if someone is deceased, we put in deceased. It stops their record, it deletes their cell phone number, it removes their address, it sets them into a family um, related to their spouse if they had one. It does like seven things automatically, which were the things that generally embarrassed us in the past. Like somebody would, you know, uh, try to call, you know, those types of things. And this software takes care of those things that would embarrass us in those res respects. But let's talk about prospects or active potential. And so for every group, now this isn't automatic, um, and you can get to this by making a search question, but it appears in your role. So when you're looking at the class role, if you click the member status where it says you're the leader, somebody's the member, it will put all your prospects together, okay? And so all I did was, oh, this is the roster, okay? So this is where you look at a roll sheet, it does something, but it also gives that I've got and this is where that how many people can you hold in the room comes in. So my current class has got 13 people in it. My maximum size that I've got set is 20. I've got seven open spots. So if your room holds X number of people, and we, you put that number in there, you can run a roster, and it will tell you how many more people you could add for Easter Sunday. And that number needs to begin to get important to us. Okay? Because we're, we're, we're getting ready to start growing. We're, uh, I was looking for this. I, somewhere I had it and I lost it. But there was there's a video that I had. And it is um, a grandson and his dad talking about Grandpa's old car. Okay? And the grandson and grandpa are pushing the old Chevy into the barn. And then the next thing is, you know, there's all the hammering and the working that goes on. And they won't let dad in the garage. And finally they open the door and the old 55 Chevy comes out and it's got wide tires and loud pipes. And, and grandson is driving and grandpa's got a big smile. We're going to roll Bible study back into the garage. I'm going to tune her up. We're going to drive it. We're going to drive it well, okay? So that room count becomes kind of something to kind of keep an eye on, okay? Let's talk about prospects. Larry, yes. Is there a simple way to handle uh, home count members of your class? Yeah, you can, you can mark them. Um, we can make a way to mark them. But if they're true homebound, keep them on your class. You can make them inactive, John. And you can, when you're doing like a party or something, a card. The, the interesting thing with homebound is we have a great homebound ministry. We really do. Um, probably the, maybe the best homebound ministry of, of the five churches that I've been a part of as an adult. Um, Krista did a great job. Amanda's doing a fabulous job. But they still like to hear from their friend group. And I think that's important. So I don't want to just like, oh, homebound, chuck them away. 
remember the the attend the people on the roll are people, and I, I don't want us to lose sight of that. I mean, I want good numbers, I want good data, but if you know why they're there, um, that's all that matters to me. Yep. You know, we're not we're not trying to clean up the rolls just to get a good number. I want you to hear that. These are people. A lot of them are friends. Like I talked to the the Thibodeau today. I hadn't seen them in church, and I don't know how long. They are, but they were here and they were smiling and man, they were stoked that they were here. And so, and he what, excuses about every other week about Bobby. Yeah, but they were here today. So, anyway, um, the prospect list we printed out uh, for you, and it basically is just a name and a telephone number uh, to do that. Start looking at those. Now, one of the things about that prospect list is, is you talk about that is this is like um i think i just adult one because they come up first and so in this group role if you click on this little arrow right here it'll sort it for you and all the prospects will come together at the top or the bottom okay now one of the interesting things about this system is it, let's say um so you know we can do this with homebound john where we've got a member serving out we can mark it that way if we need to. But let's prospect here. If you were to, as a leader were to click on their name, it would open it up and there's a field um, that is looks like this right here. Recent notes. If you click add recent note, I'm just kind of walking through the process, it opens up something that looks like this. And you can go, this note's created by Larry Stair. This drop down, if I touch it, it'll say prospect, phone call, prospect, whatever. And I could say, uh, do, give it a due date that I would like to have it contacted. And I could assign it to somebody in my Sunday school class and it'll email them. Hey, will you follow up on this and you can make a note for that. And so it makes it easy for you to like make some contacts like that. Let me back up a page. So dealing with prospects is going to get important. This box right here, when you open up your group, this is what you, the view you see. And a lot of us were trying to check attendance here. This is to deal with these buttons right here. And so if you um, were to click a couple of people, let's say people who are absent, then you can go up to action and you can say text and you could go hey missed you this morning we talked about this read this scripture hope to see you next week and hit send and it'll send a text or it'll do an email but this is a, makes communication really much much faster and much much easier but getting back to contacting these prospects knowing what they're doing and if somebody needs to be removed Make a note um, why you remove them, and you know let us know, and we'll, that's fine. Um, but if it's just they get in your group and go, hey, we don't know why we got them, please call them. Um, sometimes we get a, a contact, and what we know, like the Connect card, that we're, you hear the new Connect card, we know from studies that if we ask more than about four blanks, they're not going to fill it out. How many of you have stayed at a Hilton hotel and it says, hey, we want to ask you one question. And you open that one question up, and the next thing you know, it's 43 questions. What do you do? Move on. <laughs> you do what I do. You just, like, close it and go on. But we know that if on, on that Connect card, if we ask about four things, a lot of people will turn them in. So you know what the four things we are? We ask, name. <coughs> phone number, um, and then uh, their uh, email, and then what decade they were born in. That gives us a guessing point to put them in young adult ministry or adult ministry or maybe they're a student. It gives us a guessing point because that's all we've get, we're getting. And then they, they can tell us it was first time visit, second time visit, they want to talk to the pastor about salvation. They want information on young adult, student, uh, adult, and um, accepting Jesus. 
Now, here's the interesting thing. If they say, I want information on accepting Jesus, it, the system waits three hours and then texts Dustin. If you do a certain age of those decade questions, it waits three hours and then it'll text Tim or Travis or Larry so that we can, because what we know is not only do they only fill out about four things, they haven't heard from us in 24 hours. They don't, they don't care. So getting some speed to following up on contacts. When you get one of these, don't, don't let it sit there for a couple of weeks. Jump on it. Yes, Chris. Question on the uh, text feature you were talking about. Yeah. Is it smart enough to be able to take an alpha name and pre-fill that for you, or is it just going to be a raw text of whatever you send them? So, like, as an example, is it high, fill in the blank name that's already there, or is it just going to be, make sure you send the text that's nice and generic, but it can go to anyone. Yeah, well, if you do multiples, then you make it generic because it doesn't have that. And this is a this is a quirk of texting. I know more about texting than I really ever wanted to learn in seminary. And I'm, one of the reasons I like this system is I don't have to deal with texting. They do it. But the quirk of texting is texting assumes this is SMS, so it's short messaging service. So it assumes, one, that you know who you're texting. And so it doesn't do the where you can do at Larry. Now, if you do the email, you can also email here. And email will let you do first name, last name. Email is more customizable. And you can even make boilerplates. You know, like um, if you want to remind everybody what the scripture is next week, you can make a boilerplate and just fill in the scripture and hit send to your class. And you can do it that way. Um, if you have someone in your group that is the hospitalist person, they can do their hospitalist. You can have a generic thing and you can attach that file and you can send your prayer list that way. I wish texting would do that. The other quirk of texting is, and if you're a group that has small children, this would apply to you uh, or students. Texting assumes that if in this system, if the name has a number, you're the person who's supposed to get the message. If that makes sense. So if you're a mom and you're trying to stay on top of everything and you put your cell phone number in for like eight children, you're going to get eight texts, okay? Because short messaging system, not church teams, but short messaging assumes you know the number, you know who you're contacting. And so number equates to a person. It's a quirk of the system at this point. Maybe down the road it'll change, but that is the wild west of communication right now is text messaging in general, okay? Um, but, you know, staying up with prospects, um, there are ways to tell when, you know, you can, like your prospect, when they add it to your class, that box will change. So you'll know here's when this one came in. If you can get them there, are you sticky? Those, those were things that for me in the old system were really hard to figure out. I could do it. I did it routinely. But this system, it's, it's almost at a glance. Are we holding on to people? And that's, I want to get stickier and stickier. Okay? Questions about that? Larry, yeah, John. The thing on, I don't know what the research shows on prospects, but, you know, I'll usually try to follow up a prospect pretty strong in the first two weeks. And then sometimes maybe a follow-up the third week. But after that, if they're not responding, they're not going to respond. So I just give up. Well, and, and this is, you know, I used to say you, if you try for a year. So here's the new deal. If you will try to contact them about uh, six times in a two-month window, if they haven't joined us in two months, they're not going to. That's just where we're at right now. Um, that's what the information I'm getting from the church teams people are. As a matter of fact, their sample uh, contact form only goes out 60 days. And it's like, and it's only once a week. And it's, a couple of them are pretty generic. Like, just hope you enjoyed our visiting our church. That's, that's all it says. But it's, hey, it's expressing interest. 
I'd love for you to come. You know, this week we're doing, but about, you know, if we're not, if we haven't pulled them in two months, statistically we're not going to. But what we want to do is, um, I think for us where we're at and the climate of churches here in our area is, um, we'll take them out, but who knows what we'll do with them. But we see people come back a few years later. The ch- there's a cycle, it seems like. Um, and it, it has to do with when who loses pastors. Okay? I'm just being honest with you. Okay? So, um, we, right now, we're just coming out of a whole, uh, Georgetown redid their Sunday school. And we're seeing people visiting from Georgetown. That'll last for about six months. And, you know. Well, you know, if I send somebody an email and I get a response back, glad to hear from you. We're out of town. We're going to be gone for a few. I'll keep going after yeah. them later. But if I don't hear from them. Yeah, if you, if you send it and it's crickets, like, and, and I'll give you this, John, and why I think the two months is reasonable is um, if I give you LSTARE at Yahoo, don't expect a response. I, I, that's the email I give telemarketers. That's the email I give, you know, and, and the reality is we know that like a lot of people have a Facebook account that they give their employers. They have a Facebook account that they give their family. And then they give a Facebook account that they give that their friends and the pictures are different in all three of those. And that's, that's just where we are. So I think two two months, if we make a good effort in two months and it's crickets, then it's okay to go X, you know, no. Because if you're using a system to record when you did it, we'll, we'll see that stack and we'll go, yeah, crickets. Okay. And that's not a problem. Okay? All right. Any questions about that? I want to jump jump gears for just a second here. And I'll, I'll be around afterwards, and you can ask me whatever you want. Let's talk about beginning to think about making group communities that are thriving, a thriving community. And this, this information this time is from the BGC Discipleship Collective. And so, and it's out, of, I took it out of order. I wanted to do it in a different order. So if we're talking about your group as a community, uh, that group learns to thrive uh, unconditionally love in this realm of community. Um, community uh, leads members to take responsibility for each other, replacing their own convenience with uh, the contentment, the commitment to others. And so that that's kind of what we're talking about in community is we're talking about, you know, you matter to me. And I'm willing to let maybe what I want take a backseat to being committed to being a part of this, okay? And so how do we develop that? And so as we think about this, one of the things that we're discovering in, in small groups, remember when, you know, if you're old enough, you remember when Southern Baptist published job descriptions for Sunday school and they were all like two pages and they were, nobody did them. The concept of everybody in the class having a job was a, was a profitable one. Because we're all investing, we're all invested. If we're all taking a part, I'm, I'm working so that this experience is better for you and for all of us. And so I, I'm not even going to begin to list all the jobs that you could, and they don't even have to appear on the official jobs list, okay? But let's talk about a couple of these, uh, some of these I think are important. Member care. We do a decent job about caring for one another at First Baptist. And, and if you believe that, and you need to have had my two phone calls this week where I, I basically got called to the woodshed because somebody had been out for six years and no staff person had contacted them. I wish I could say that's the only time I've ever had that phone call. Or when I get a, a class and it's like my parents died and nobody's reached out 
to the family. We do a good job, it seems, of caring for the people that, are, that we are close to. But missing people, people that are have, for one reason, aren't in the flow anymore, I don't know that we do as good a job with that as we think we do. Some high-profile people we do. None of these people were high-profile. They were people that like, well, the one, the one couple, they, they moved to your family. Family moved them here to be closer to the family. They were here for about a year, got sick, started watching from television. COVID happened, and we just lost them. And we just need to quit doing that. Barry, so regular content. Yeah, John. How are you going to keep up with them unless we as the teachers who know these situations pass this along? Do you want us to give you more information about people that are out like that? I read Monday morning. You know what my Monday morning job is? I read your prayer list. I go through your prayer list every Monday morning, and I try to make evaluations of, is this important? If I think it's something that we don't know as a staff, I highlight it, I copy it into email, and I copy it to Dustin and Rochelle. That's, that's my Monday morning job. I look at attendance figures, and I copy, I go through pr all, all the prayer lists I get. I don't get everybody, but I get a good number of them. A lot of things get duplicated because of who the families are, relationships, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I want to know. And if like, and I told this lady, the lady that called me, she she gave me the names of two other people that she was in contact with. The thing is, you know how I found out about her is she was talking to somebody at the grocery store who happened to have been a member here before I got right about the time they left. Right about the time I got here, I was the only staff member he knew, so he called me and said, "I think this lady needs some member care." Well, yeah, probably. It's a little red-faced on that one. But yeah, we want to. Know, we need to know. Now, I wish I could say we were excellent at taking care of that. One of my sub things is I'm asking you to do that. I'm going to, you know, get a little testy about about that. Um, we have a, uh, like I said, our homebound ministry is great. You got somebody that's looking for a place to. I don't know if I can serve anywhere. Well, can you visit somebody? They'll get a blessing out of homebound, like in a heartbeat. But anyway, regular contact. If people are, are absent, we just need to know. If you know, that's, that's enough. And if you need to let, you know, like, hey, there's something going on here. Is this, you need to know as a staff. At least we're cognizant. Um, and so that's important to me. Um, greeting. One of the things that, is being worked on is the first impressions. And so it would be really, really helpful if, if in your group you had three or four people. You know those people that kind of can draw people into a conversation, make somebody feel welcome? If you deputize them, you are our class greeters. If somebody shows up at the door with a slip of paper, and your job is to go greet them. Make them feel welcome. Bring them into the class. Get them a good seat. Introduce them around. Uh, but don't just have one person that does that because they're not always here. And B, you might, you might have a Sunday where you have more than one uh, guest, okay? But greeting sets the tone. You know, if somebody walks into your class and somebody comes to the door and greets them, this class wants me, you know? If you put them down, you know where to put them next to, you know? Don't sit them next to the person that's had, you know, lumbago has been acting up for the last 27 years. You know, put them bound to somebody who's warm and cheery. It's going to, like, if I, if I was bringing people into class and I could sit them, you know, I'd put them next to Janet Lackey every time. Because Janet Lackey will know everything about their family and their family's family before you can get to prayer time. And I love it, you know. Uh, there's some people in Jerry Bradley's class, you know, that I'm going to put them by certain folks in that class because Joan Bach will know them and probably have them on a mission trip on Wednesday. You know? 
That's the kind of greeting that we want to have. You need to have some fellowships. Um, you know, schedule them out ahead, you know. Um, and, and what's interesting, most of our classes that are growing classes have fellowships. Um, because so much more, there's so much more relationship development to be done outside of that 50 minutes where we're trying to like greet, pray, study the God's word, uh, fellowship, you know, and we got 50 minutes to do it and the choir leaves, you know, five minutes early and, you know, uh, it's just such a compressed time. But, you know, schedule things ahead, get your group for input, um, and, you know, we've had some really interesting fellowships around here. I've been to some really interesting fellowships. Um, and that, that's fun. You know, I like going out to eat. I like throwing axes. I like, I mean, I've done all those things. And they're, they've all been great fellowships. But, you know, I don't see Pat Kramer's group really getting into axe throwing. But in some of the young adult groups, that would be really fun. Uh, our single group used to do that. Um, attendance. Uh, Having some people in your class that are that are taking that load off of you, that are also knowing who's there and not there, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But those are kind of some of the base jobs besides bringing the lesson. Now, what other jobs could you have? How about somebody in your class that I I, I could never serve? Could you be faithful to wash the tables every Sunday? You see where this is going? Now, if, if we can take somebody from Windexing the table and then begin to move them through a series of jobs as they were developing a leadership pipeline. And we need the leadership pipeline. We, we need less Moses answers about can you Because in reality, if God calls somebody, they can lead. But we have to begin to get people into, I'm, I'm working with a guy right now that, that um, through a circumstance of work, a near-death experience, you know, he, he felt he ought to get serious with God. So we did a spiritual gift inventory. And he said, okay, now what do I do? I said, pick something. And just and tell me what it is. And I don't know. Okay, well, let's do this. Start with first impressions. Go introduce yourself to this person and say, I have taken a spiritual gift inventory with Larry and I have the gifts of da 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 da. And I'm going to, I want to try it out here for three months. You're not making a forever commitment. Just, you've got to begin to try to serve, okay? Um, and I think this. And this is why I stole this from the BGTC. Um, get, a, get someone in your class that becomes the coordinator. We'll give them that leader role so that they can see everything, but they're the person that is doing the majority of your communication. They're the person that is working with you not the teacher to coordinate all these things, but they're the person that's kind of helping you keep the glue together. So for some of us, it's our spouse. My spouse is across the way punching the buttons right now. You know, she's helping. Um, but communication, finding ways to keep people in your group informed as to what's going on. You, you know, texting uh, is a part of this. If it comes up and it says, Oh, you're texting. It's going to cost two cents a text. In our $2.2 million budget, we won't miss two cents. If, if we get to the end of the year, and I have to take a meeting uh, in the budget and finance because we were communicating and trying to reach our members, beat me. Okay? Um, now, I don't be wasteful. If it's like, if it can go on the slow boat, the difference between paying the paying text and the the free text, you'll see both of those if you get into the texting module is, if you pay, it goes in and AT&T goes, yes, we'll send that right now. If you do the free, it's like AT&T will go, yeah, we'll get around to that maybe midnight. 
tomorrow. There is no, it just goes into a hopper, basically. So we're learning that, you know, spending a little bit of money to get, if it's text worthy or it is time sensitive, spend the money for it. But finding someone in your class that can do this communication role, helping you build community, there are also going to be people that are probably going to be able to step into a leadership role. You know, finding an apprentice, all those things. We need to begin to think, and how do we begin to move people from table washer, deacon, to apostle? That's what happens in the New Testament. Where do you guys keep the carrier pigeons? I haven't seen any around here. <laughs> you would have to know uh, the guy that wrote this. Um, I, I left it in it because I thought it was funny. Uh, but he gets... Uh, uh, see how many of us read it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, guy, the guy that writes that wrote this for the BGTC is... Um, going to uh, be the minister of adults at Tallawood, and I'm going to miss David. David Adams is his name, and um, uh, David, uh, I just love working with David. Um, he's got this kind of uh, boyish, kind of opy kind of grin. You just can't help not like him, but he, he's got his doctorate. He teaches at Dallas Baptist, but he, you know, to get his point across, so you, if you have to, use a carrier pigeon. I don't even know where you could find a carrier pigeon anymore. Um, but anyway, questions, comments about that, about building community? We're going to talk probably about community a little more the next time we get together. And so over the course of this year, we're going to talk about the phases of Sunday school work. And that'll be probably about 20 minutes of our time together. So questions, comments? Uh, visitors. Yeah. Because I had two visitors the last um, a couple months, and I put their name in. If they come back, I put their name in as a visitor, but then they don't appear anywhere. When you say put their name in, when you say because they're not on the member list yet. Right. And then at the bottom, you can add. Oh no, you just add members. You don't put their name in. Yeah. Oh, but I do put their names in the notes. Actually, I did. I put the number that we had, and then I put their name in the notes, but they don't show up anywhere. If you go to um, add right here, you can add them. Okay, so I can add them. They don't have to have be committed to being a member? No, you can add them, make them a prospect or a guest. Make them a prospect, actually. How much information do you need to do that? Um, we want, it's going to put them in your group automatically if you do that, but it's helpful to have text number and email, name, text number, and email. Obviously, if we can get an e a mailing address, that's great. But you can, you can do that later on. That's a great contact point. Say, hey, I'm just going to get the bare minimum today. I'll call you next week and, and you know, help you get the thing. The other thing that you can do, I think you can do. I may, I may be lying to you right now, so just know this, okay? Right here, I don't know if this is, I'm staff, and so my things look a little different. But it, right here where it says unsubscribe, that deals with the email stuff. I don't know if you see this, but um, there is, if you do, there is an invite to update. If you click it, you can email them the link to update their information, or you can email them the app, the link to get the app. So when you call me and go, I can't get the app, this is what I do. I just go find your name and say, here it is. It's got a generic thing. It just sends it. Now, I may have told you something you can't do. Uh, that's what I get for going off script. I get excited. I like Sunday school a lot. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay. Didn't you get feedback, too? feedback to you on what? On the app? Um, you can send that to me if you want, and I'll forward it on. You can also go to, I think, the help button and do that. I will tell you this. They are, they are working on um, a refining process right now. And so I've seen the computer version. I don't know what changes in the app. But if there's something you'd like to have changed, just let me know. Well, it's real simple. We all check in. And when I go to check roll, you know, there's no, I don't know who's checked in or who's at. I can, I'll show you that. I can sit and walk through that, I think.
Okay. Other questions, comments? We'll see. You're probably more right than I am, but we'll see. Yeah, I dealt with Shelby so long I could kind of see it in my head. Uh, I can't do that yet with this. Okay. Well, I want to. I want to say this. I. I. Uh, we. Have, I'm going to go in the kitchen here, and I'm going to get some of the tea and lemonade out. But um, I, I. You can't imagine the amount of stuff Karen does on your behalf. I mean, there's a lot of things that you, we see Karen doing, and we appreciate. And Karen has such a a wonderful uh, spirit uh, about her. Um, I was blessed to work with Sherry Pilaf, um, and Sherry and I had a great relationship. Karen and I have had an even more wonderful relationship. Um, I joke all the time that I work for Karen. That really is true. Uh, she's going to say no, um, but Karen can, there's only two ladies in my life that can tell me to go home and change my clothes. Jeannie and Karen, and I will not with not question that one bit. That's how much I trust their their judgment. Um, if if you got an email that had a mistake in it, um, like the first one I sent, I was like trying to be really sneaky and do it behind Karen's back, and the subject line didn't match the date and the thing. You can guarantee that Karen didn't read that, because Karen reads for dates and the. The thing she knows all the things I, that I do wrong when I get in a hurry, um, and so I I can't begin to say enough about Karen and all the the good things that she does. She likes chocolate, so we have chocolate cupcakes from Katie Palmer tonight, and uh, I'll go get the uh, lemonade and tea out, and I take a moment just to express thanks because she's the person that's been ordering your literature, gets it in your room, makes the corrections. Uh, the card on the door, your name on the roll, the roll sheet, corrects information. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. And she's just been so willing to do anything that's been asked of her. And um, I'm most excited that they're not going anywhere. Uh, her and Buddy are, are, have become good friends. And I'm excited that they're just going to be in Sunday school and I can recruit them to teach a class. And so... <laughs> I told you, you got to pray about those kinds of things. But anyway, Jeannie, if you would uh, just go ahead and stop the video, and you can make your way on over here as well.